Okay, nice to see y'all again. Uh, gotta apologize to y'all, I've been gone for a while. Been trying to get some videos out. I owed this video to one of my supporters, and uh, we're just kind of winging it today because I couldn't do exactly everything that I wanted to with the product in this demonstration that we're going to do. But y'all going to get a point or two here. Now, it has had heat waves, uh, maybe it's a hurricane, not a hurricane, floods, everything else going on in the world. Plus, we got life. We got me and Pat got some new businesses we're doing together. I'm writing books as always. You know, my next book that's coming off of the, the Spectre Island book that we wrote when we went down there and we uh, camped out on the old Big Fish uh, movie set, had us some fun, did all this and that. Got me to thinking a whole lot about medicine and how people are going to get by. You know when the grid goes down, etc. Now, for all you farmsteaders, homesteaders, preppers, this, that, the other thing, where you got them kings of, uh, you know, long life seeds, etc. I've always fussing about because uh, if it don't grow in your area, it is not going to be good. I said that in my other book, you know, when I was talking about bug out gardening before. But the main thing I was thinking about. Is I just got a big whack job put on me. Y'all get to see later. Pat and I went off for a week. Taking care of business. Garden should have been fine. It looked beautiful. Y'all seen the covers of my books before when I put in my big raised beds. Uh, I got a beautiful garden every year. Well, down here in the south, we got these things that we uh, call the uh, devil's spawn from foreign countries or something like that. Uh, seeds. Not immigrants. That's not what I said. That all of a sudden you got this weird tropical plant growing that you've never seen before. It just appears to mess up your world. And you go, okay, how am I going to do it? Well, I organic garden, and that kind of limits me on what I can do. And I don't do the Epsom salt and vinegar unless it's something I want to kill. And I got a buddy of mine just bought some kudzu plantation over there that I'm still laughing at. And I told him to use old motor oil, which he looked at me quite weird about, but I can't figure out a better way to get rid of it. So, anyway, we're going back in history, we, and I study things, as you all know, quite a bit, and there's a instrument that was used quite often in England, it's been used for centuries, there's a lot of uh, what they call broad forks out on the market, and you know when I suggest something, I pretty much find out everything I can about a product and then I try it out for myself. Now I've got a product today that came from a place called easydigger.net. Now a great gentleman, he's fun to talk to too and he don't mind answering questions and he's got skill in his hands and his brain because he built a broad fork the way he wanted to have one. Now basically all a broad fork is, is kind of a pain to explain without showing one. I know you might be able to see me in the camera, but I don't know yet. We ain't zoomed over there, so I'm still going to explain to you what the broad fork concept is. You got basically got two plow handles in your hand, and you got a bunch of spikes in the middle, about 24 inches wide. You step on it, and you rock it back, and you turn up some soil. The only thing I can do 24 inches at a time I want to do, make it easier. I should have brought my swivel out here. I forgot my swivel. I had, I, yeah. I, I'm going to show my swivel later. All right. So anyway, so I have raised bed gardens because that's what I believe in. It's a lot easier to do, especially if you're older, uh, rather than me out there row cropping, et cetera. Now, I can't say that. If you go to eastdigger.net, you can see uh, Mac, the originator, the inventor, the man behind the curtain that made this thing, uh, doing a very large garden in a big, broad Montana-looking pasture, which is a totally different thing, different way of doing stuff. Uh, I can do all these things. It's kind of like when you see one of them one-wheel cultivators. I don't like pushing them either. So I always look for angles on things. Excuse me for a minute. So Max sent me 
his version, and you want to do a little zoom here, of a broad fork. Now, this particular one, I have the short spikes on, and normally you would use these longer spikes. Now, Max sent me both because he was kind of a little bit worried, I think, about what I was going to do with it. And most people, you know, they, they got more weight on than I do. I lost uh, 30 pounds, y'all know, to them Aspen dentists. Try, you know, don't ever go corporate dentistry, folks. It, it is a pain. I'm still trying to gain it back, and now my garden's going to poop out on me, so we're figuring it out. But anyway, the basic concept is you use short spikes on hard ground, rocky ground, this and that, and a broad fork's not made to turn that over. And you use your longer forks, you know, in soil that's already been prepared of a certain way, etc., versus just trying to bust it up. So... I considered all that when I had this nemesis of a weed come in. I mean, this weed ate my garden. They ought to make an apocalyptic book about this thing. Now, y'all ought to consider that you can't guarantee weeds, fertility of the soil, uh, whether or not you can amend the soil to grow a crop or it's the the, it's going to rain or you're, you're out of water now, municipal water is shut off and you can't water your garden anymore. It's a hybrid, you know, all these things that we talk about. I wanted to find me something that was just a basic thing for every prepper that was thinking about bugging out and being realistic. Can we bust up a lot of ground, do it easy, do it better, and do it smarter? This broad fork right here is the ticket. Now, when I was researching these things, I looked at, oh, beautiful wooden handles. I love wood. You know, kind of like people, uh, do you want to buy your axe with a wood handle, a steel handle, or, or, or fiberglass? Everybody got their preference. Everybody does their thing. I still use old carpenter's hammer with a wood handle just because I like hanging on to wood. It's up to you. Now, Mac, he's... he's natural born machinist I guess and, and he had a very high level of I wouldn't call him an engineer type scientific machinist if you want to talk about it that way that truly made me appreciate this when I, I looked in some people's comments because I always read comments to how other people like a product don't like a product how does the owner present it all, everything I put in choosing something for I ask do they want to be included in the book do they want to be a supporter and I get this you know in exchange for advertising but I have to pick out the right one you know I won't say anything that I haven't tried out myself right so we were going to plant some stuff in the woods uh, basically Golden Seal, which is a, a great herb, a lot of y'all know this, whoever wild crash forages, etc., because you know I, I like my herbalism, my medicine. Uh, we're in the middle of the worst drought. We're gone. I said, oh, I'll take it over in the garden bed. We're going to do that. Guess what? Within one week from not seeing very many weeds, I had... Uh, Oxalis. This is oxalis, by the way. Let me teach y'all a little something here. Now, oxalis, you see that heart-shaped thing? A lot of people call that clover. That's how we can tell the difference between is it oxalis? Wood sorrel, they call it also. Uh, several names for this. Uh, you don't always see the beautiful flowers. But it's that heart shape. You know you can eat it. You can find this stuff on the top of the Himalayas. You can find it in Japan. You can find it over here. You can find it up in Montana. It's everywhere. Is it clover or is it not? And why is this better? Because this is better food. See? I'll even eat it for you. How about that? <laughs> now, it's a little spicy. Depending on what you're doing to some people. To me, it is, but you don't feel it like you just bit... Uh, a bag full of mowed grass, right? 
Well, the plants are very important. You see, I'm not making any faces. I actually enjoy tasting it. You may or may not, you know. But I always keep a pot of it up here to show people. If that's growing in my garden next to my tomatoes, I don't care. I'm not making picture perfect. I like that stuff. It mulches for me. It's edible. And I'm not doing the Nat Geo thing I turned down, right? For Doomsday Prepper. So, we had that grow. We got some nasty stuff growing. Uh, hogweed is what I call it. Uh, first lane, y'all know familiar. It's got many benefits to it. I'll have a little bit of purse lane, but I, I don't want much in, in old Pat wanting to plant it once she found out how good it was. I said, oh no, I used to have 25 acres I owned and it had a hog farm before me that the farmer was growing. It'll wipe out a garden. It covered the thing. I don't think anything can kick purse lane's ass. I don't think anything can kick chickweed's butt, right? That's what I got in there and I just leave a little bit of it and do normal garden practice. This stuff come over. It took that over. It decides it's going to just do what it wants to do. It don't matter what's in there. I, I wish it kill weeds, but it gets too tall. Anyway, it kills my, my vegetables. So we're going to go out here in a minute. But what this is all about, the point of this is not turning up ground so much with the super fine tool, which I was explaining to you about the machinist. When I saw the machinist compliments on this, any of y'all know out here, especially you biker types that fool around with uh, frames on bikes or you're making something for your RV or doing this and that, to be able to bend square tubing without messing it up and crunching it, look at this. This is beautiful. Beautiful job. Uh, nobody's got that talent in their hands and their brains anymore. And instead of putting paint on this, he powder coats it. You talking about solid? This thing weighs a little something, but uh, Pat's going to show you she can use it today. The handles go in six positions. Uh, as a four, it's four positions. I'm sorry, I might make a mistake on this because I just like it this way. Because I'm looking at it, and this is so it's already built on the slant down here at the bottom for you. Do what you want. Uh, the tines on the thing, I mean, they're solid, but, you know, you don't be trying to get a tree stump out with it or something like that. It's not made for that. But if we go out here to a field of nothing, like I said, bucking out, I can put in a nice long row of whatever I want very quickly and easily. And I also got to talk to Mr. Back about uh, the concept of the seeds, because I've taken mine all the way down up, you know, uh, if you go into no-till gardening. Why do we get weeds? Because we go different depths in the soil. They, they, they hibernate in there, and I, I need to ask him a few questions, because I'm not the uh, broad fork expert on helping me with my weed. But I figured out what that weed I had in there was good for. It's good for everything. Now, Pat and I are, I grow heel all down here. Now heel all self heel is an herb, Pernilus vulgaris, that for 2,000 years everybody said, hey, that's what we're going to call it. Now I don't even have to tell you how good it is, because is it good for this and that? It already says it in the name, heel all, okay? And it's very powerful. Great thing, y'all can research it, I'm not going to do this thing about heel all. But anyway, I found something. This stuff is maybe even better or worse or whatever you want to call it. They use it for, uh, and I studied medical tests. That's why the book's getting out later on, my, my sequence here. Uh, that I had to find out more about this. So I've been researching medical studies that uh, it reduces tumors for cancer. They use it for sleeping sickness over in Asia. Uh, in Africa in particular for everything from uh, leprosy on down. Some of the worst diseases in the world. And then I'm finding medical facts on the stuff that it does and they're studying it or what actual real medical drugs they synthesize parts of it out of. 
yet the stuff is edible. What we got down here in this terrible thing, I can't even figure out from the name of it at first because it's called chamber bitter. You'll see a lot of it in North Florida. I'm down here in southern Alabama, so we're kind of skipping across here, but it's in Mississippi, it's in Texas, it's everywhere. But I found out it's worth a little bit of money, too, because it does what it does. So anyway, we're going to, I want to get it out there, get it out of my garden, and we're going to sell it. But see, if I just want it out of my garden, they'll tell you that stuff is bad because you can use every herbicide known to man It's going to laugh at you and fight every inch with you. And you got to do it certain times, and you got to have not just one kind of thing, but a broad spectrum, three or four kind of thing. Or the best thing is just pull it. Now, pulling it out of the ground ain't too bad, but this, this tool right here, making my life so much easier. I'm going to clean up my beds, I'm going to get my garden back, because I was about ready to order three or four five ton dump trucks full of something that probably brought me whatever new kind of weed with it. Yeah. But I was about ready to start over because. If you look at it on the internet, Chamber uh, uh, Bitter, uh, and any word with bitter in it, when they say it's edible, I don't really want it, and I ain't religious like eat the bitter herbs this month or something like that. I mean, there, there's a point of them, and usually bitters are for stomach. Now, the unique part about this Chamber Bitter thing is it's got the word yearn in, in it, and it's Latin name because it's always known for urinary tract disorders. They use it for gonorrhea, etc. This stuff's like penicillin. I'm amazed. It took over my garden when I was expanding my hill and wiped out my veggies. Now this is going in the book because if you get if you wiped out your food source, right? You got to have a way of doing something. So I'm gonna try to trade medicine for food in my next book, and I'm gonna use this tool right here. Then I'm gonna go off and then I'm gonna take dead ground and just put me a garden in it. Now a wonderful thing to put a dead ground garden, ready, set, go, if you all bugged out out there, I hope you don't dump and plant in the woods or something, you know, you got to find you some smooth ground, old pasture, something, your front yard, you want, you want to get your sawed out, this thing's perfect, get sawed out, out it, it'll pick it right up, alright, so, having said all that, long conversation here, Y'all excuse me, my, my garden is the most embarrassing thing that ever happened. But this is in one week, it, nature pulled a, a pin out of the hand grenade on me. Zap. Plus, Bonnie Plant Farm sold me some hybrids, which I like growing the biggest tomatoes. So I always get Beef Master. Uh, Beef Master, I, I want the size of softballs. I want bragging rights at the barbecue joint. That's what I always do. Within two thirds of their growth, they went dead on me. What tomato black? Didn't have that. Then I had to, uh, we got uh, uh, lovers. That you don't have to. I hope I see one out. These black and red looking grasshoppers are a look exactly. But it's called a lover because they stagger around when they walk, like a land lover. And uh, those things, poisons won't even kill. We just let them grow. I plant them in their own little crop. They eat like sweet peas. And they leave everything else alone. We had that. We had drought. We had everything. But uh, nature decided to whip my butt. Now, if you got this stuff, you're not going to be able to eat, but you're going to be able to heal yourself. So off we go. We're going to do this. Ten minutes. I told it like this. Pat shouldn't be filming me with pointy things pointing at her. But she'll keep her distance. Now it's got my goji berries in, in my plants. And it, it's pretty much taken over everything. I have mold out here that I was so sick and tired of it, you know. But things like that they grow big like this, like my, my rosemary here. It's they happy. They kind of keep stuff <laughs> away and... Uh, this stuff got rosemary after it. It's everywhere. You got it in my pot. It's, it's everywhere. You give it two seconds, it's going to do. Let me see. Let me Let me grab a piece of this. This stuff. Looks like a motion. 
Now you look on the back of plant. You see, it's got nothing but seeds on it. Yep. You can mow it down. You can do whatever you want. It's the damnedest stuff that you ever seen. I think it's a communist plot from Cuba. I'm playing with y'all. But somebody decided to destroy my garden big time in a week. This is only a week of me being gone. And plus, I got the uh, the rainwater thing on, right? Now we we tried to. Uh, this year, we were changing up, got these, uh, what you call patty pan. I, I normally grow like white ones. There's one growing there. Uh, because these are mildew resistant and everything else. This thing was full of beautiful things. Look at that. That's that garbage. It's everywhere. And it grows a mile a minute like country. Now, it only gets about that high. It's about as tall as it gets, right? This thing was perfectly clean. Wiped out my tomato, does everything. Just it covered the whole garden in one week. Kicked my butt. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. But, and we were getting good stuff because everybody went home with baskets full of stuff. We're gone one week. Nothing more. I can normally see a family of six or seven out of this. Watch out for the uh, sprinkler, baby. Okay. So yesterday, I finally put this thing together, getting knee high out here, uh, and I did this little digging thing, and I said, well, show you what normal kind of soil I got. It's pretty good, right? Pretty good. So I've been mending it for years. Oh, I forgot I even had that there. That was my uh, lovage that was growing back, but now it's dead. Now pull this stuff out. It's pretty good because it's not too hard to pull out, but you can get it like that, right? We want this because it cures flu, cancer, everything I can think of. Good for diabetes, good for heart, good for everything. A panacea for everybody when the grid goes down. I price the shit. It's $160 an ounce out of Indonesia. Not an ounce, a pound in Indonesia. I said, well... I don't want it. I don't care. Can't get that for it. Who's going to pay for it? It's also called Shatterstone. Any one of y'all, like, like he lost kills he all, any one of y'all have any kind of kidney stones, anything like that, that's what's in your medicine is this stuff. Now think grid down. You got venereal disease or this and that, or, or just normal kidney stones like a lot of people do. You make a tea out of this. If I have to, I can eat it. You know, it's not too horrible. I ain't gonna get down there and eat like I did the other two. And you can ask me if I tried it before or not. There. Anyway, basic concept of this thing. Since I already did a little bit right here, I'm just gonna put it in close to where I want to go with it. See, right here I got goji berries that Pat hand did all this row. He's in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, this this right here. Yep. We just put a bunch of goji berries in there, and that ain't dead. That's just, they do some weird stuff when they want to. That's one plant you can't kill, and that's a superfood, too. You, you just hand did all that, spent hours doing it by hand, pulling it out. Yep. And then you said, we're going to collect this. And I'm like, oh, I remember how long it took you to do that and how terrible it was. We want this mess out of here. But I want to sell it, right? So, you, you step on it. It goes down, right? Watch this. You just rock it back. Just rock this thing back. And it pick up all that. Then I won't go in front of it. Do it again, right? Just did a little bit. And I'm going to rock it back. Alright. And I go all the way down the end of this line. But what we were talking about is I want this stuff. And I want to clean up this bed easy and the only way we're going to get rid of it is totally get it out of our way with no herbicides or nothing plus I'm going to sell it I'm turning lemons into lemonade folks so all yeah. I got to do now I've used the easy digger look at that look at that I can get most all this dirt out now Pat unfortunately she's going to go have to go through it see like this this one plant right here that that's not this yep okay 
So we throw that to the side. But I also go, hmm, that, that might be lemon balm or something. Oh, that's a new mix. But no, we're going to make it pure. Anyway, we got this. Look how clean that is. Isn't that beautiful? Nice. And you just take this and you put it in a, a bucket of water. Do that a few times. So, I'm going to grab it again. Because the easy digger he got it out for me. There ain't enough to that. Where this huge thing looks like it's hell that, you know, my own little weed hell that I got to deal with. And I was about to get the dump trucks out here and tear out all the beds. Look how far I got just playing around with y'all. And I'm making money off it. Y'all study your own weeds. What you're fighting with, don't kill it. Find out everything you know about it. Learn it for yourself. And then maybe your brains go on to something different that's a little bit better than that when you study herbalism. But it's so hard to study herbs that you want to know what's local, what's around you. So I'm just going to do my, my little gig here once or twice. Three minutes. Got it right here. Grab me a handful. Give it a shake. Got my stuff going here. And I, I'm digging big time. This is this one of my worst beds. Got tree roots and everything else in this thing. And that's probably $15 worth of stuff I got right there so far. And my, my soil's aerated. Is done. Is everything. And if I had to bug out, that thing's going with me. Now, we'll tell you more about this as we go along, but I just wanted to get this one out. And I thank you all. So, for me and Pat. Oh, I want to show Pat doing it one time, no? No, we're running out of okay. <laughs> battery. Go ahead. Thank you. See you later.